Howdy y'all. So, this is going to be my first video. Technically the second video, but first video about machining on a hobbyist lathe. Bench top lathe. <clears throat> this is going to be strictly about reference information, stuff like that. Uh, I'm doing this here at on my reloading bench <clears throat> yeah probably gonna do two or three at least three videos probably just right here from my bench uh, no reason to be uh, at the machine for what I'm gonna be showing you what what I want to show you on the tools and, and the references and stuff like that so anyway this is what we got this is what we got right here, a machinery handbook, and my version is the number 25. Now, they say this is the holy grail of machinery book. Well, yes and no. This thing is full of information. Good information. It's also full of useless information for the average bench top machinist uh, you get into it and there's just a lot of reading a lot of formulas in here stuff like that uh, man you, you go on and on there's uh, oh man the it talks about materials and stuff like that which is kind of good in a way you're trying to figure out what materials are uh, here's o-rings uh, just on and on and on thread data torque and tension of in fasteners cylindrical grinding it just as I'm flipping through here so many different subjects standard tapers forming tools hardness testing wire rope and if you if you need that kind of information that's great but you know the average machinist he's just wanting to turn him a little part to you know maybe fix his fix something around the house or, or you know got a little uh, hobby project he wants to do you know maybe he's into those steam engines or or RC cars and making parts for RC cars and just whatever <clears throat> uh, I know a lot of guys that like to make little gun parts and stuff and I'll be showing y'all some of that stuff one day one of the videos but to me this book is too expensive and it will probably fry the average person's brain trying to figure out where the information and stuff you 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 need uh so if you like reading you know soaking up a lot of information go for it i looked it up on amazon a while ago they're going for 107 bucks for the 31st edition and for what I'm understanding is there every time they come out with one of these they delete some something else to put some new stuff in you know and they're gearing it more and more toward the CNC uh, information but they're good books I personally use this one maybe once every two years I mean, I, I don't need it I mean myself but that's what it is now there's other little this is an old one that I got from long time ago bolt circles coordinates uh, sign sign settings and all those kind of things I've never used one of those tables I just own and own the information and stuff uh, this little car lane uh, Trigonometry tables and handy references for engineers. Let me get this thing closed. 
I don't even know if you can find these anymore or not, but got some pretty good information in it. There it goes back to all your signs and stuff. So you can get those, pick up those things like that online. Find you a drill chart. Here's a small one. You know, I got some big ones at the shop hanging on the wall. <clears throat> Gives you all your fractional drill sizes, uh, number drills, letter drills, you know, in your in your millimeters too. Uh, drill tap sizes, things like that. One of the best things today is the internet, obviously. You can go online to pretty much any manufacturer and go to their website and they will have a feeds and speeds charts or something dealing with their tools because they have proprietary coatings and this and that so they can do different feed rates, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> But what, one of the things you can also go do is go online for, or say that you're doing something a little weird that you hadn't ever done before, and you need, say, a tap, and you don't know what size uh, drill bit it is, because it's, it's an oddball tap. You can go online and search for it, and you find it. Well, I found mine. I found this the other day. Now, this is a little three ring binder full of pages that I've gone online or been handed to from older machinists and stuff like that. But basically the other day we start on some of our parts. We've been running a lot of BSPP threads, which stands for British straight pipe, something like that. <clears throat> it's straight pipe and tapered pipe. And uh, I needed a quarter 19 BSPP, which tells me the drill size 2964. Now, I did a quick search online. This popped up Allied Machine and Engineering. Acme. <laughs> Acme, or Allied Machine and Engineering, is the go-to for spade drills. I mean, if you you want to in order a spade drill, you're probably going to end up buying one of those. Very reputable company, so I trust this data. So I printed this out, and I punched three holes in it, and I put it in my three-ring binder. That I keep well I say I keep I finally got around to it this video has gotten me to do something <laughs> all this stuff was just stacked up in one of my drawers in my toolbox and that's uh, this time I got to straighten this up so I went and got me a three ring binder we already had a whole punch here and I sat and straightened all this up before I started working this video but you got this, and I'll show you kind of the collection I got here of stuff of information as I've collected them over the years. Uh, this is a center drill chart. Let me see if I can turn it this way so you can kind of see it in the picture. This chart was actually made by an employee of ours. He sat down with like a number two, 82 degree, and then a number one, 60. These are all 60 degree. These are 82. We use a lot of 82 degrees on the mills for uh, countersinks for taps. <clears throat> anyway, uh, he sat down and, and figured it up. It's like, let's do a number two, 82 degree. The tip diameter is 078. Tip length is 105. And for a number four drill, or for a number four uh, threads, let's say like four or 440, go in 130 thousandths and that angle will come out to just the very 
barely bigger than the number four tap. That way you don't have the little uh, burr on top of the part. Very, very nice chart to have. We, we have one of these hanging on every machine at the shop. And we program and we can just look over and glance and, and do that. Uh, I was doing some, I built me a, uh, a shotgun, uh, shotgun choke, an extended one with, uh, and it was ported on top to help. Well, actually, it was ported a little, probably about 360 degrees of, of it to help recoil. And when I was searching online to find it, I found this chart here. And it gives you all the basic diameters of, you know, a 12 gauge. Uh, the main bore on a 12 gauge is... 729 that's at, right there at that dimension you know <clears throat> now this shouldn't have much to do with uh, uh, the choke on the other end of the barrel but I found it and I printed it out and then like I was on I went to Carlson's chokes and they're telling me that their cylinder choke tube is 620 for a 20 gauge and then it was over here was was this 12 gauge i don't remember now but information that i've collected there and then on this one from briley shotgun chokes i know if you're in a shotgun you know what a briley is <clears throat> but cylinder is basically it's straight out from the end of the barrel is no no choke whatsoever light skeet it drops it no, there is no light skeet for 12 gauge but diffusion skeet improved cylinder the the taper on it shrinks the barrel by ten thousandths and so on and so forth so i figured out what i needed to do to to make my my choke tube for my shotgun and it worked great. Here was the thread data that I needed for threading it, putting the threads on it to thread into my burrow. Has the uh, best wire size, substitute wire size was 080, 018. And I had to measure those dimensions over the wires. Uh, this was a formula to do rollout for one of my RC cars. I mean, I just had it had it at work for some reason, and I stuck it in my book. Uh, this was the original chart, and I've modified it since then on the center drills. Uh, bearings, bearing charts. If you're making a, a, a fit on a shaft to put a roller bearing on or, you know, a ball bearing, and you wanted a tight fit or a, a slip fit with it here's all the numbers for fafner bearings and what sizes you're supposed to get this print this thing is getting old it's getting darker and darker by the years and it's got actually two pages of it uh, now this was out of this somebody took and handmade this from the 11th edition of the Machinist Handbook from 1943. Hand wrote it out, copying it out of the book. It's a, a chart for tapers. Now, I've had this around for years, and then when I uh, started getting my learning computers and stuff, I went in into Excel and I copied all that into Excel so I've got a nice clean sheet of it. But basically it's like let's go to three quarter taper, three quarters of an inch per foot taper, which is your typical uh MPT pipe taps or pipe threads. And what it's telling you is 
if you change the diameter of the taper by a sixteenth of an inch, it moves everything an inch. So like if you're uh, cut the threads and you gauge it and it's standing off an eighth of an inch and it should be flush. Well, an eighth of an inch, you want to move an eighth of an inch? Well, if you want a sixteenth of an inch, you would move it, change the diameter by four thousandths. So an eighth, if you want to move an eighth, you'd be changing it by eight thousandths. And this is a good chart for for tapers because I used to do a lot of tapers on uh, rotary equipment with had uh, tapered couplings on them and we're repairing them and you got to get that coupling in the right position and you need to know how much to take off this is a good reference for that uh, more bearing charts uh, some thread data stuff here this is out of the machinist handbook too. And I'll show you something else on, in a little bit where you can get this information, not, not necessarily this information, but that. Uh, you're doing a uh, flathead screw. It's got an 82 degree taper on it. Uh, what size do you need to, to make that taper so that that was set flush well you look at the chart here and you look at for say a number four and theoretical sharp corners on it would be 255 you know so you would measure how how big your diameter is i got one of these hanging on every machine too because we do a lot of that kind of stuff uh acme thread tools this is the nose tip of the nose on the insert to cutting cutting one so until you get into acme threads yeah pim fasteners table of cords if you want you know uh say you're doing to do uh six holes in a part and you you figured it all out uh, man, it's been so long since I even used this. I mean, multiply the diameter of circle with the dimension of C. So if you want six holes, you divide the A. Boy, I don't even remember how to do it now. But basically, it tells you how far the holes should be. You measure it from this hole to that hole, that hole to that hole, all the way around. That's your cord. And I've got a couple copies of that. Uh, metric pit, thread pitch. Uh, this is how how deep you should drill it to get, you know, what is standard for th threading and tapping and stuff like that. Woodruff keys, how to how deep to cut them stuff like that more bearing charts this is for uh, uh oil i don't like to call it an oil seal i think that's what it's called that little deal keeps the oil flinging back in a certain direction those are on big turbines uh pipe fittings And, you know, I say it just goes on and on and on of, of, as you collect the, because you can go online, like I say now, and, and pick up, go to websites, you just search on Google and you'll find, this, this showed up on Google in a PDF form. And I clicked it up, clicked on it and printed it out. So anytime you can find those kind of information, get them printed out, put it in a binder. Uh, another th one I want to show you here. Uh, 
All right, the top one was my latest project. I made a, a mold from uh, for my 303 British. And I went on NOE website, and I kind of liked this bullet, so kind of dimensioned all my stuff off of that bullet. Uh, Picatinny rails. I uh, I machined several Picatinny rails on some of my air guns. Uh, there's part of the prints there, part of it there. That, that's the side profile. That's the end profile. Uh, this is the front bearings. They're not front bearings. Front wheels on my drag cars. Blue, the black dots are the O-rings because we use O-rings for the actual tires on the front. This was the rear tires. And then you slide a uh, uh, glue some foam on it for the tires uh diff locking uh this is for it to run a straight axle in the in the cars i was running uh here's a print of a crossman 2300 air gun which i have and i i blueprinted it so and i've made made a couple of these just different projects uh here's my schematic for my deer feeders when i was building my own deer feeders stuff like that and this goes on and on but i keep a print a copy of all my prints the way if i want to go back later and make another one i can do that okay the next thing i want to talk about to me, is the best thing for a newbie to get for information for feeds and speeds. And it is an app for your phone. I mean, with today's technology, you know, going and buying a book is almost waste wasted time. There's so much free information out there on the Internet. That you can get pretty much anything off the internet now. What I was doing, I was one day looking for something. I needed some information, uh, you know, a calculator type thing to look to help me find some speeds and feeds for a gun drill. I have never run a gun drill before until the last few years. We got finally got a mill that has uh, through the coolant through the spindle coolant. And so now I can do some gun drilling, <clears throat> but I had no information on how to do it. So I was looking it up and sure enough, I found a, an app, found several apps and I finally decided on one and I really like it. And I'm going to show y'all what it is here in a minute, but I downloaded the free version, tried it for a little while, worked great. So I paid for the, the pro version of it and it was less than 20 bucks you know you can go to amazon or wherever you want to go to and you can look for uh there's an actual calculator uh, you know a physical calculator for machining they start at about 70 bucks i believe it is and they work great. I know a lot of people use them, but now, like you say, every day with the internet, more and more things are being evolving and stuff. It's too easy to go get it off the internet, and and that's what you need to do. And like I say, once you if you if you go on the internet and find it, you know a sheet or something, print it out, put it in your little book. But. What I want to do right now is I want to show you the CNC Machinist Calculator Pro on my phone. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to do a screen recording of me working the app. So we're going to roll that footage now. Okay, this is the CNC Machinist Calculator Pro. All right. Notice it looks like a regular calculator. You got 
<clears throat> several buttons here. You got the turn calculator, the mill calculator, drill, uh, tap and drill, position calculator. You won't need that until you start learning GD&T, which is really complicated. All right, finish calculator, surface uh, material surface calculators, bolt circle, thread calculators, thread data, and on and on. Uh, here's a chart with center drills, and that's just a standard 60 degree uh, bell center type. Uh, they also have 82 degrees. You can, you can get center drills in several different degrees. Uh, now this three the but the three bars in the top left corner. If you push that, you get a whole new set of uh, buttons. Uh, hardness calculator, gun drill, unit conversions, uh, material data stuff like that. Uh, angle solver. You even got a brain check button. And now we're going to hit those three bars again, and you have another set of buttons so let's go back to the original set here it this thing is so handy i mean if you want to do uh just for a lathe to hit the turn calculator button comes up asks you what material you want to use let's just do some alloy steel no no a car carbon steel and we're going to do Let's do 1018. Uh, select tool type. You touch it. It's going to come up card by. You touch it again and it's high speed steel. So choose which one you want. Uh, touch the diameter. Let's just type in one inch for ease here. And then you hit the return button on the uh, keypad. And it will move that out of your way. And it's telling you 675 surface foot per minute, which is 2,578 RPMs. Now, the green little slider deal is your hardness. So if you know the hardness of your material, you slide it to its, to what it is. Uh, I'm not used to BHN myself because most of the stuff we have is... Uh, is Rockwell C, which if you look just below the RPM and surface footage, it's converting the BHN over to Rockwell C. And that's what I'm used to. But if you noticed, let's go all the way back over here, you got 2578. As your hardness goes up, your RPMs go down. And then you got Scroll on up and it'll show you cut off and groove and cut off speeds and speeds, stuff like that. Cut times. And it'll tell you a lot of information if you want to put in all that information. So let's go back to the main screen again. And let's just pick up uh, material surface footage. And we're going to go to, we can go to non-furious. 6061 and again you can change it from carbide to high speed you notice it's pretty much cutting it in half once you go to high speed same thing changes your hardness and this one kind of gives you all three of them together in one one shot go back to the main screen uh thread data here is a very good deal for finding all your, the numbers for a thread, like if you're going to single point it, or if you're needing to calculate thread strengths. There's a lot of numbers you need to know for that. Let's just do uh, UNF threads, and we'll do, uh, let's say, a quarter 28. And then it gives you this set here. Well, obviously, you say on, on the right is external and internal. Now, what's 1A, 2A, and 3A? <clears throat> that is the classification for 
your tolerances. You know, and one A is basically your sloppiest tolerance or the most tolerance. And as you go from one, two to three, three obviously has a very small tolerance. So <clears throat> the most common is two. So let's just type touch on the two. And here's all your information that you need for that. And if you're doing mic over wires, and it says here best wire size is 026, which you're not going to have in a set of wires. But, you know, and I don't, I'm not for sure offhand what, what it is, what I've got, but let's just say 032. So if you touch that there actual wire size button and put in point 032, then it gives you the maximum, your mi minimum maximum meet reading over mic over wires. And that's how you gauge your, your threads. So this is very important information. Uh, let's see, let's go back to the main screen again. Thread calculator. Now here, you can make custom threads. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of companies out there that <clears throat> make threads on their parts. And they are, they may not be a standard 60 degree, and what's how they get away with it, but they they can uh have it i guess they put a patent on it yeah, but anyway you know you say that you got a project that a half inch won't fit in but a seven sixteenths is too small so you just touch the that the enter the thread major and type in say 475 and you're going to do 32 pitch here's all your Go hit your uh, return button on your key deal to get rid of that. It uh, gives you your basic pitch diameter, your thread height, your thread leads, uh, single point depth or double thread depth. And if you're looking, wanting to uh, see your passes, what kind of passes you get. Okay, you touch, touch that screen there and it'll say external. It's telling you make the first pass at that diameter, second pass, and then the final pass. So it's telling you to make it in three passes. Obviously, this isn't in stone or anything, but you can, it's a good guideline. Uh, let's see, what's that? Oh, surface finish. Since we're mainly talking about bench lays right now, we're going to type touch up the first one. Enter required surface finish. Okay, what is what surface finish do you want? Common is one twenty five to sixty three, uh, and when you start getting to thirty two, is getting into uh, finishes for journals and bearings and stuff like that. So let, let's just type in 63 for this for this one. And then type in the corner radius on your tool. Let's type in 015. Now it's telling you you're going to need 5 thousandths of an inch per revolution to achieve a 63 finish. And let's go up here and change it to a 32 now. And it's going. You're going to need about three and a half thousandths of feed to get that same 32 finish, or or with that same radius tool. Now let's change. Let's go back to 63 here, and we have a 0 .007 radius. You're going to need three thousandths of of feed rate. But if we change that radius again to 030, you can increase your feed rate up to a 7. 
So you got you can play with that a little bit there. That's that's pretty neat part of this calculator. So I'm not going to say much more on this because and you if you get it you download it it's like twenty bucks. I, I, it's less than twenty bucks. I, I can't remember exactly how much it cost, but it's dirt cheap compared to everything else, and it's got a lot of information in it. One website I'd like to recommend too is Engineer's Edge. You now they have a lot of stuff in there. Uh, takes that some of it you actually have to buy a membership to get to it, but there's a lot of information on that website. Say like I used it a lot in designing my uh, air reservoirs on my guns. It's called Barlow's Law. And it's basically how much pressure a cylinder can handle, you know, before it blows up, basically. Because you're make you're technically making a pressure vessel. So <clears throat> you go in there on that. I use that website a lot for that. Go in there and type in uh, the diameters, you know, IDOD diameters, the type of material that's... Uh, uh, I think you type in the materials, but you type in the yield strengths and things like that, and it will and and a safety factor. I always remember there's a safety factor on some of that stuff uh, to come up with the right wall thickness you need to handle the pressure you're using. So anyway, but it has a lot of the information, you know, a lot of the information that's in this book is on that website too. So that's a, that's another good source. Okay, so that was the CNC Machinist Pro calculator on my phone. And like I said it's about the only I couldn't find a price because everything I got's already got me signed in on my Google account and it, and it won't show me the price. But I want to say I paid between Twelve and twenty dollars, because I don't think I've ever paid anything more than twenty bucks for an app. I don't even think I've paid that much for one. But anyway, <clears throat> that that tool is very very helpful. But I'm hoping that this little this little will get y'all started. Maybe getting some reading uh, before you even get your machine. You know, maybe you can stop and, and read some of this stuff and, and and start trying to learn before you actually get your hands onto the machine. So anyway, that's what we're going to do on this one. And next one, we're going to talk a little bit about tooling as far as OD turning tools. That's what we're going to do next, OD turning tools. So until then, thanks for watching.